Now that you guys got iMovie on your computer, well, you got to figure out how to use it, right? Well, guess who's going to show you all of that? Right here. I'm going to give you the complete tutorial right here, plus the advanced features that you guys have been asking me so much about, man. Blowing up my comment section, baby. Right here. Right now. Okay, boys and girls, get your pencil and paper out. This is going to be a 30-minute complete tutorial with an introduction to the advanced features. It's going to show you how to turn those things on. So the first thing you got to do is click the little gold star iMovie, not the purple one. Okay, I'm special. I have two. All right. And after doing that, go to the top menu where you see File. Click on File. And below that, you'll see New Project. Now, this is what we're going to do every time you have to start a new movie right and you see how it has new event just below that well don't worry about that those are places where you have all your video clips audio and images all right so click on new project and you will see that another window appears right well this is where you can use the preset themes or the cinematic movie trailers that iMovie provides but usually I just select no theme and I'll make my own but you're free to do whatever you want okay play around with it so the next step now is to simply enter a name or a title for my movie project. I'm going to name this Mike's Movie. How about that? Is that original? And just below that, you're going to see Aspect Ratio. Now, you either have 4 by 3 or 16 by 9. Now, YouTube's standard aspect ratio is 16 by 9. So that's pretty much self-explanatory, right? And the frame rate option just below is a question that everyone always asks me. So let me explain that to you right now. NTSC is the television broadcast standard for the United States. PAL is the broadcast standard for Europe. And 24 frames per second cinema, well, that's if you're trying to get a film production look, okay? And just so you know, iMovie can automatically add transitions in between the video clips that you're importing. And as you can see from the drop-down menu that I'm showing you right now, there are quite a few of them, huh? But just for a quick note, um, I usually leave that box unchecked because I'm going to show you how you can add those anyway. So really, just go ahead and click Create right now. So now you're going to be into what's called your iMovie interface. Now, this is where all the magic happens. This is where all the fun begins. And the layout of this thing is set up where I have my viewer at the very top right and my timeline just below the projects and events area. But you can always swap this thing around if you want to. You see the little swap button that I'm pointing to right now? Well, if you click that, then you can change the orientation of your interface very easily. And then you can just go ahead and change it back if you don't like it, right? Um, there are two ways to do this. Uh, if you went to Window at your top menu and then drop down to where it says Swap Events and Projects, you will see the same effect happen. And then you'll be able to either use the little button down there or go back to Window and go to the menu setting again and make the changes all over again. You know something, if I didn't tell you that, you'd probably spend the next five hours trying to figure that out, right? Am I right? So now notice that my viewer at the very top right is a little bit too small. So go to Windows, go to Viewer, and you can change it from small, medium, to large, depending on what your preference is. Me, personally, I like it as large as possible, you know, because I do wear prescription glasses and I can't see the nose in front of my face. Let's move on. So here's my best recommendation before you get started with this project. Organize your file folders. Now, go ahead and create three folders. One says audio, one says images, and one says video, or video, audio, and images, whichever way you want. Just make sure you know where all your video clips and audio and images are, so that way it'll make your project go faster. Now, you see I just clicked on that little external camera import button? Well, that's if you have an external camera and you want to import your pictures directly from there. But for now, just click on File, Import, and Movies, and you'll be able to locate those folders where you have your video clips, just like I just did right now. But before I click on the Import button, there are several options that I'm going to have to go over with you right now. You see, you can have it saved to another location other than the default location that's on your computer. You can add to an existing event that you have or create a new event. You can optimize your video by either having it large or full size. Large is what I always recommend. And then you're able to either copy those files over or you can simply move the original video clips. I always select copy because I always want to retain the original video clips that I had previously before. Okay, click on import right now. And notice that iMovie is processing and optimizing this video right now. Normally, this would take a long time, but 
I know you guys got things to do, so I put it on fast forward mode. See what I mean? So once iMovie has completed processing the video, it will drop the video into the events area so you'll be able to preview it and edit it. Now notice that you have a new event in your event library and to complete the explanation, you can have many events for each particular project. Now if you get tired of looking at that window, you can click that little button I just clicked and the window will go away. Hey, isn't that cool? Don't you wish you can do that for your spouse, huh? Just click that button and they'll go away just for a few minutes and come back. <laughs> Funny, huh? So the little button just to the right of the go away spouse button is your full screen. We'll click it once and then you'll be able to view and preview your clips full screen mode. So how do you get out of this full screen mode? Well, there's a little X at the bottom left or you can just hit the escape key on your keyboard. Got it? All right. So the video clip that you just imported, well, you see that little red bar that I'm moving back and forth? That's called your playhead, and that's what you're going to use to help you select certain portions of that video clip. Now, if you hit your space bar on your keyboard, wherever your playhead was, it's going to start playing your video just like that. Okay? So, as you can see, we can see the video, but we can't see the audio, right? But wait a minute, are we supposed to be seeing the audio? Or I thought we were just supposed to be listening to it. Well, click this little button I'm showing you right now, and now you can see all of the audio waves. Listen, this is production. You're supposed to be seeing everything. You see what I'm saying? So notice I have my cursor on the little bar right above the audio and you can see that I'm pulling it up and down to adjust the audio level from soft to loud, loud to soft. Isn't that pretty cool? I bet you never even knew that before, right? But you heard it right here. So go ahead and click that show hide button again to make the audio go away. Didn't we have another button to make something go away before? Let's not even talk about that. All right. So now let's look at this video clip in detail. Question, how many video clips do we have here? Six, seven, eight? Well, actually, it's only one. It just seems that way because the way your settings are in your interface is to view many frames within that one video. But I'm going to show you how to go ahead and adjust it so that way you can just see either the entire video with many frames or the entire video with only one view. So all you have to do is basically, you see how many frames I have here? It looks like we have many videos. It can get kind of confusing sometimes when you're actually trying to edit these videos and you don't know which one is which. But if you take the little bar and move it over to the right, as I'm doing right now, you will see that that is just one video clip right there. And there's me, my face. So next up, question, do we actually need this entire video clip or do we just need certain frames within this video clip or just a certain part or section of this video? Well, if you notice what I'm doing by clicking, holding and dragging inside of the video clip, you'll see that little yellow border appear. Now, this means that I'm able to select certain areas of the video clip and then preview it to see if it is something that is usable for my movie project. Now, if you are paying attention to this video, you notice that First, there's a little mouse pointer, and then there's a little hand, and then there's a mouse pointer, and then there's a hand, right? Well, that hand is telling you that you're able to click and hold and move or drag it into another area, such as your timeline. And there's another indicator that you need to be paying attention to also. There's a little green bar at the very left, and there's a little plus sign inside of the video clip. That is telling you that iMovie will allow you to put it in that area. You got that? Okay, let's keep moving. So the final question is, how do I get rid of the little yellow borders? Well, just move your mouse away and click and they're gone. So let me backstep a little bit to clarify something that I said about you should be able to see your audio, right? Well, if you look at the meter that I'm pointing to right now, you see how it's kind of green at the bottom there? Your audio should be about halfway. Now, do you know what happens when you run a red light? You get a ticket, right? Well, in this case, if you're running that audio and the meter's red, well, you're going to clip it. And what clipping means is that it's going to be distorted. So no red lights, okay? Just the red button that you have to hit when you have to subscribe to my channel, all right? Let's keep moving on. So now let's talk about the settings that you can do with all of your video clips in your event library or the video clips you have in your timeline. Well, listen, there's a little blue gear at the bottom left with a little drop menu arrow. Well, if you click that, then you'll be able to go ahead and make adjustments to that clip, either video, audio, or cropping and rotation. Very cool feature here. So let's us go into the audio menu first and see exactly what we can do with this clip in regard to audio. Now, what I mean is that you'll be able to adjust the volume of that audio in that clip. You'll be able to fade in, fade out, 
For example, if the audio clip was music and you wanted it to fade in slowly or fade out slowly, you'll be able to enhance the audio to make it sound much better than it did before. And you'll be able to go ahead and customize your equalization in regard to how you want it to sound. So if you wanted it just a little bit more bassy or if you wanted this a little more treble or a little higher tone or something, you can set those right there and then just click done and then it's all done. It's very easy to do that, huh? Pretty cool. So now it's time to have fun. So I'm going to take this video clip that I have, maybe part or all of it, and drag it to my timeline so I can begin the process of creating this movie project, huh? Pretty cool. So you see how I have my little hand? I've selected the entire clip. I've just dragged it down to my timeline. I've got a little green bar. I've got a little green plus sign. Okay, let it go. Let it go. And there you go. It's as simple as that. Just drop it into your timeline and you're ready to start doing some editing on your first movie. Now, we only have one video clip here, but just repeat the process by importing, selecting and dragging them into your timeline. And there you go. Now, for those of you who have been actively paying attention and watching the video, you'll notice that I am scrubbing the timeline right now. I'm moving that little playhead back and forth. That's called scrubbing. And you want to be able to do that so you have an idea of how your video looks before you actually do anything with it. Okay? So notice recognizably that there is a, another or the same type of gear symbol at the bottom left of the clip, right? Well, this is where you can make your adjustments again. But we have a few more at the very top and one more added here uh, for clip, video, audio, and cropping and rotation. So for this part of the tutorial, I'm going to select clip adjustments. Now, once I click on it, then a menu will appear and you can see this is the inspector window, the inspector menu. You'll be able to now independently select clip, video, or audio and make your adjustments right here all at one time just for this particular clip in the inspector. You'll see that you can adjust the duration at the very top. It's one minute and 17 seconds, right? You can also add video effects. Now these are very cool features here. I want you to pay attention to this. If I click on video effects right now, you will see that for this particular clip, video clip, I'm able to select a certain type of effect for the video. This is negative. And it's a very cool feature to have just in case you want to create an effect very quickly. Uh, you can select anything you want here. And once you've done that, the effect process is immediate. There is no waiting period and you'll see it on your screen just like that. Okay. Now let me cancel out of that and go to audio effects. Now this is pretty interesting also because this is something that you might want to take advantage of. Um, the audio, let's say you have a narrative or you have someone speaking, can be manipulated. It can be changed. You know, I just caught myself sounding exactly like Barack Obama. My fellow Americans, we need hope. Well, listen, you can change your voice to anything here and it's going to take effect immediately. Pretty cool, huh? And how about if you wanted to kind of slow down or speed up your video? Well, this is where you do it here. You see the little turtle in the hair? Uh, you know something? I don't even know who won that race. Do you? Well, this is where you do it. You just move your slider back and forth and it will change the rate or the speed of your video. You can also, if you notice at the very bottom there underneath that there is a reverse button and you simply have to click on it to see the little check mark. And now your video will be playing in reverse. Now that is very cool, huh? Another thing that I wanted to tell you about is the stabilization. Now, if you had a video clip that you shot without a mechanical stabilization device, well, you might be able to put it here and have a digital stabilization to correct some of the errors that you have for keeping your camera steady. And lastly, rolling shutter. Now, if you don't know what rolling shutter is, then I guess it's my job to tell you that, right? Well, let me give you a simple analogy that might help you to understand it. If you were running really fast next to a wall and someone said, take your finger and tap it twice while you were in motion, well, it wouldn't be in the same place, would it? That's because you're not standing still. Huh, I taught you something new, didn't I? So I'm going to click done now that you understand that and let's move on to the next one. But first, let me ask you a question. Where is that little gear symbol so I can change my settings and my adjustments? Do you remember? Listen, I told you twice already. It's at the bottom left of your video clip. Remember that? So just click the drop down. And now let's go to video adjustments. Let's see what's in there. And remember, it will bring up your inspector again, where you can choose from video, audio, or a clip, right? Right now we're in video. Now pay attention to the top. There is a histogram at the very top, something that is very useful for photographers, videographers. 
It's an analysis of data and information on a graph or a chart that allows someone to understand its value. It's a graphical representation of a digital image. So when you adjust the exposure, brightness, contrast, and saturation of your video, uh, you also make those changes to the look and appearance and the value and the levels of your histogram. Now this is a very cool thing to have because if you're looking at your histogram, you will be able to understand exactly what's going on with your image or your video simply by understanding the meaning of each value. Now that is beyond brilliant, isn't it? And also just so you know, at the very bottom left, you can revert whatever changes you made can be brought back to its original value. All right, so now let's keep the inspector open and click on audio. Now you can see that I wasn't able to affect fade in and fade out on my clip when it was in the event window or the event library, but I am able to make those adjustments for fade in and fade out when it is dragged into my timeline. Now that's pretty interesting. So here you can see I'm in my equalization section, okay? And I can select quite a few effects. This is a flat effect where I have a flat EQ. And what that means is that there is no change to the original audio, the original sound, all right? Huh, you guys need a bathroom break yet? You know, it's a pretty long tutorial, huh? I told you. Well, anyway, notice how I'm dragging my bottom slide bar to get to the end of this seemingly long video, which really, in essence, is only one minute and 17 seconds. Is that what it is? One minute 16. And the reason that it appears to be such a lengthy video is because we have to make the adjustments in the same way that we adjusted our video clip in our event library. You understand? The little slider on the bottom right, you see it down there, that little slider? That's what's gonna allow us to manipulate the view of our video so instead of seeing all of the frames, we're only seeing the video, the view of one video clip. Now that's very important to remember. You really get confusing because you'll think you have a lot of videos but you only have just one, right? Don't forget that, all right. So now what I want to do is to be able to add a second video clip into my timeline. Now notice I'm using the same clip as I had before, but I'm just going to drag it down so you can see I have my green bar, I have my green plus mark, so that means I'm good to go. Release it and the video clip will automatically fall into place, right? You see that? And notice that there is a slight gap in between both videos. This just kind of gives you the distinction as far as where each video is and that they are separate videos. You understand? Notice how I'm highlighting both videos. I've just adjusted my settings so I can view them both together. Clicking on them so I can see that those are two separate videos. Now just practice that and you'll be able to master it. All right. Now suppose I wanted to split both of these clips in two. So in actuality what I want is to have four separate video clips on this timeline. So let me ask you, what would I need to do here? Do you know? Do you have any idea at all? Well, how about if I just simply right click on the video clip and then you'll notice that the menu will appear with all of the options and within that is split clip. So I'll be able to just select split clip and wherever my playhead is or was on the video clip, that's where the split will take effect. Now you've noticed I've just made two separate videos. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the video on the right. Right click, split clip. And now I've got one, two, three, and four. That's pretty cool, huh? I just showed you how to do that. And each one of them can be edited, changed, manipulated independently and separately. And if you pay attention to the time or the duration of my video in this project, what was one minute and 16 seconds is now two minutes and 15 seconds because I just added three other videos to the one that I had originally before. Now let's transition over to transitions. Now you notice where I'm selected at the very top right? Well, that's where you want to be also. These transitions are basically animations that smooth out or soften the harsh cuts when you go from one video clip to another. So do you remember when I dragged two video clips into my timeline and there was a small little space in between? Well, these transitions are what you put in between to fill that space, to give it a little smoothness. You understand? So watch my screen. I've got the little hand and the little green plus mark, and I'm going to drag it right into the space. Look for my green bar. I'm going to drag it right into the little space. Let go. And once I let go, you're going to see that the transition will position itself in between both video clips. iMovie has sort of a magnetic effect when you drag and let go in the timeline. So I'm going to select a different type of transition and drag it into another area of my timeline. 
or in between another section or another area of my video clips. Now you see how they have different symbols on the transitions? Well, this is just a quick indication for you to be able to identify quickly what exactly it is. And another important aspect for you to be able to maximize the effectiveness of these transitions is to understand exactly how long does it take for this transition to start and finish, to complete its cycle. Don't you think that would be pretty important when you're trying to view the beginning of a video clip and it's taking five hours to fade in? Well, here's the deal. Every transition has a little gear icon also that allows you to make adjustments. The adjustments that you want to make are the adjustments in the time, the duration of how long the transitions will take place. Notice 0.5 seconds on this one. So I can go ahead and change the duration of this transition to, let's say, for example, three seconds. So that way it just lasts a little bit longer. Now, the check mark at the very right allows me to apply the same time value to all of the transitions that I have in my timeline all at the same time. Click done. Now notice that all of the transitions that I have are much smoother and they blend better with the videos as they come together. You can see that there is a smooth transition for the videos instead of a quick one. Okay. Now let's talk about text and titles. And again, notice where I'm selected at the very top right. See that? Now text and titles are just a little bit different than transitions. I still have my hand tool. I'm able to grab them and move them over to my timeline, right? But a text or titles can be actually put over onto or on top of a video. So that way you can see the titles as you're watching the video on top of the video that's already playing. Or you can also have them independently as its own separate video animation also. Pretty cool. So now it's going to ask you to select a background, okay, whichever one you'd like. This particular text I'm going to be placing in the beginning, sort of my introductory title, in the beginning of my video. So it is going to be asking me for the type of background that I would like to select. Now you can select any one you want. Once you've selected it, it will open a window where you will be able to make the changes to the default text that was placed as soon as you selected the background. Okay, so here I'm saying, please subscribe, right? That's not for me, all right, that's for you, okay? <laughs> now let's talk about how you can add audio or sound effects into your project. Notice where I'm selected at the very top right, the little music symbol, right? That opens up a window where I'm able to view all of my folders and my sound effects, iMovie sound effects, iLife sound effects, and within those folders are sounds. And I can simply click on the little play button to listen to them before I decide on moving them over. Now, the procedure is the same, but you will not see a little hand tool. You'll just simply click and hold the mouse pointer on the sound you want and drag it over to your timeline. What you want to do is you want to be able to drag it to an actual clip. And I'll tell you why that is, because if you drag it over to an actual clip and let go, the audio that you've selected or the special sound that you have selected will place itself underneath that particular video clip instead of placing it behind it. And as always, there's a little gear that you can click on to make your adjustments to the sound, the levels, and the volume, right? And you can click and hold on the audio clip and relocate it to any point on the timeline as you wish. Now, how about music that you have in a folder somewhere on your computer? Like I have in a folder here, okay? I'm searching and I'm going to my music folder and I just happen to have something in my music folder, an MP3 file that I would like to drag into my project, right? Well, that's very simple and all well and done because you can simply just drag it into the timeline. Remember, select on a clip and it is going to place itself directly underneath that video clip instead of behind it. So once you let go, then you will see that the music clip is now attached to the video clip and you can still move or place it at any location as you wish. Also, if you would like to shorten your audio clip, all you have to do is basically just select it. You see the yellow borders and then left to right on each side, you'll be able to just click and hold and then drag it either long way or you can go to the other side and make it shorter and pull it and you can manipulate it in this way. 
the editing features are pretty much the same as a video clip. For example, if I put my playhead directly in the middle of the audio, I would be able to make a split in the audio just as I would on the video clip as you saw earlier. So now that I've clicked the gear icon, you can see that my inspector is open. I'm able to make adjustments on my equalization. I'm able to adjust the volume settings. I have fade in and fade out and everything applies here. And once you're finished with everything, all you have to do is just click done and we're good to go. But guys, don't go anywhere yet. I still got a few more things I got to tell you. Okay, really important stuff that you're going to want to know about. What you're listening to right now is my voice that I'm voicing over on a video that I'm doing for you. So you see, all you have to do is to click that little microphone tool. From there, you'll be able to select your input source, adjust your audio levels for your input, and then also add noise reduction and voice enhancement also. Now, voicing over is a very easy thing to do. It's a very easy process. All you have to do is to select the microphone, adjust your input levels for your mic, and then you'll also be able to add noise reduction if you'd like, voice enhancement, and then play the audio while you're recording. So you want to be able to hear what's going on in the audio while you're recording your voiceover. That's pretty important sometimes too, so just check that little box. So when you go back to your timeline, you'll be able to select a location or position as to where you want the voiceover to begin. So basically, move your playhead, set it to a position, and then all you have to do is just click your mouse, just like that. It'll give you a countdown, three, two, one, and then you start recording. You start speaking into your microphone. It will record, although you might not see the actual recording in process, but it will be recording. And once you're finished, all you have to do is to hit your space bar. It will stop recording and show you that it has recorded a voiceover underneath the location that you selected. Isn't that cool? And your voiceover audio also has a little gear so you can pull up your inspector. You've already been through that already, right? So I'm selecting a position with my playhead and I'm simply going to click. The countdown is initiated. And then from there, my audio will start recording. All I have to do is just to speak into the microphone. It's that simple, okay? No big deal. And uh, once you're finished with that, you'll be, able to, uh, you'll be able to sound just as good as I do. How about that? What do you think? So pretty much that about wraps it up for all of the audio. You can see that uh, everything is self-explanatory. The duration of your audio clips are there, 15 seconds there, 11 seconds there. You can see all of that, the time. Pretty cool stuff, okay? Now I want to take you guys into something, the fiesta resistance, okay? The thing you've been waiting for all this time, that is advanced features, okay? You're going to need to know this because you got the potatoes, but you never got the meat. You see, this feature is something that you have to turn on. Go to iMovie, Preferences. Once you click on Preferences, you will be in the iMovie Preferences window. Now notice, there's Browser, there's Video, and there are also Fonts. Now, a lot of these things in these areas, these are not advanced features, but I'm going to be able to show you exactly what you need to do so that way you can maximize the effectiveness of this software. Now, you see on the general where it says show advanced tools? Well, that comes unchecked by default. What this is, is that it allows you to have picture in picture, green screens, cutaways, a whole bunch of keyboard controls and stuff like that that you have in professional editing software. And by default, this does not come active. So I just showed you how to turn it on. Later, I'm going to have a tutorial on green screen and all of that other stuff. So I'm going to show you how to use it. But for right now, you need to know how to turn that on, right? I just saved you a lot of money. So the last thing I want to talk about are your fonts. Now, something that a lot of people don't know is that you can change these fonts into any fonts you like. See, these are the default fonts that come when you actually install iMovie. And you kind of feel as though you're stuck with the same boring fonts, right? Well, no. You see the little up and down arrows on the right-hand side? All you have to do is just to click it, and you'll be able to access all of the fonts that you have in your computer right now. Then you can assign those fonts to the default fonts that you have when you first open iMovie or when you open iMovie to work on your project. You see how I'm changing the fonts right now? They will stay active as those fonts that I have selected once I have chosen them and closed this window and those fonts will be active. So just on a quick note you guys I just want to let you know that uh, that I am going to be working on some more videos for you guys uh, especially on this iMovie I want you to really be able to take advantage of this. Uh, some of us have older Macs you know like I've got a 2009 I've got a 2012 you saw that on my last videos 
And it's good to have software that we can take advantage of and maximize the ability for us to be able to be creative. Um, I'm going to help you with that as much as I possibly can. You guys have any questions or anything like that? Leave me a comment. You know I'm going to get back to you, okay? And thanks for keeping me motivated. Keep on doing it. All right, you guys, thank you so much for allowing me to do this video for you. You know something? This iMovie 9, right? Old school, huh? New school? Uh-uh. True school. You see the kind of videos that you're going to be doing out of that thing, especially with the advanced features that I just gave you that tutorial on? You guys have any questions at all or anything, you know, feel free. Shoot me a comment. You know I'm going to get back to you. Don't worry about what I said the last time. Okay, blowing up my comment thing. Ah, I didn't mean that. I love that kind of stuff. You guys keep me motivated to keep doing videos for you, okay? So like I always say, Live every day. Laugh beyond words, right? And learn. Peace, you guys. Thank you so much. I'll see you on the next upload.